today's tutorial we're going to be looking at what you need to know about mass and niche markets including the two different markets characteristics, market size and share and brands. Mass marketing is the attempt to create products or services that have a universal appeal. So rather than targeting a specific type of customer, mass marketing aims the product at the whole market. The intention is that everyone should be a consumer of the product. Coca-Cola is a good example of a firm that uses mass marketing techniques. The company aims its products at everybody and anybody, regardless of age, gender or other demographic factor that makes up that person. Its goal has always been to be market leader and it remains the same today. Coca-Cola has been able to become a market leader because they have successfully created a generic brand image and that is the ultimate aim of any mass marketing product, to create that generic brand image. And what that means is that consumers associate the product so much with the brand that they consider it a product category. So when you think of Coke, you think of Coca-Cola. When you think of white rum, you think of Bacardi. When you think of ketchup, you think of Heinz. And so on and so forth. That's what we mean by generic brand image. To explain that a little bit further, I think it's easier to understand mass market products by comparing it to what a niche is. Okay, so if we consider that this is the market for baked beans, and these are the people who make up the market for baked beans. Heinz will be targeting its baked beans at mum, at brother, at uni student, at young professional, at grandad, at everybody. Heinz Baked Beans targets its product at everybody in the market as a whole. Whereas if we compare this to another brand, say a spicy chili rock star brand, they're probably only going to appeal to the uni students and younger people, which means they're a niche because they have a very small part of a much larger market. Mass marketing, as we've said, aims to appeal to the market as a whole. As a result of that, it often ends up having high sales. Because it has high sales, the companies who mass market can afford to mass produce. And basically what that means is they produce lots and lots and lots of those products because they know that there's a demand for it. Because they mass produce, they achieve economies of scale and basically what that means is because you're purchasing more and more and more raw materials you're able to get those raw materials at a cheaper price. This results in lower cost because your prices of creating the goods are reduced and it also results in higher profits not only because you've managed to reduce your costs but because your sales are high. So as you can see mass marketing is highly profitable. An example of mass marketing is Ryanair. Ryanair aimed to be a low cost, high volume airline provider. Most mass marketing products are of a lower cost. This is because they can afford to set the prices lower because it costs them less to produce. For example, McDonald's or Primark. But not all mass market products are necessarily a low cost. Take the Nintendo DS for example. They managed to acquire the mass market and became the handhold game console. They managed to do this not with reducing their prices. They were still able to keep their prices high but be a mass market product. Most people owned and used Nintendo DS's. Another more up to date example would be the Apple iPhone. They are market leaders, they are a mass market product, but their prices aren't as low as other competitors. A niche market is a very small segment of a much larger market. Niche marketing involves identifying the needs of the consumers that make up that niche and then developing a specialised product or service designed to meet the distinctive needs of that consumer. 
A niche market product sells lower volumes than its mass market alternative. As a result, their prices are usually higher than the mass market alternative. Niche market operators often distribute their products through specialist retailers or directly to the consumer via the internet. TPIGS is a great example of a niche market product. In 2014, the UK tea market was worth £591.8 million. The herbal tea market equated for about 16.12% of that. Mass market players, however, such as Unilever, Tetley and Twinings, still dominate the herbal tea market. Therefore, tea pigs identified as a niche within that market. They focus on sourcing organic and unique herbs to create their blends and promote their blends on behalf of the blend's health benefits, for example, improving digestion, improving relaxation. Tea pigs has the typical characteristics of a niche market in terms of its price and availability. So if you compare purchasing 50 bags of tea pigs for £24.99, which you can only get either through specialist retailers such as Ocado or through purchasing direct from them online, to Tetley's herbal teas, which you can purchase for £1.75 roughly, depending on which supermarket you go to. Here are a couple of other examples of niche products and companies. Lehman's specialises in non-electrical goods and products for the Amish community. Zumia's specialises in specifically surfboard and skateboard apparel. Fat Lad at the back specialises in extra large cycle wear for men and for women. Mammoth Supply & Co specialises in yoghurts and iced teas specifically for men. Effective branding is an essential aspect of establishing a niche product or service. Brands can be given personality. In order to understand this idea better, think about the differences between Mini, Pepperami and Hollister. They have created their own brand identities through their marketing materials, through their slogans, through their advertising that makes them memorable. It's important for you to be aware that the main issue with a niche market is that you have to make sure that it's profitable or the company will simply not survive. Part of being able to see whether it's profitable or not is looking at the size of the market and what potential share in the market your company can establish. As we said earlier, we define a niche market as a very small segment of an already existing larger market. Market size refers to the value or volume of a particular market. It's usually expressed in a monetary figure showing you the value of that market, but it can occasionally show you the volume, which is the number of people that make up that market. Here is an example of the UK grocery market in 2014, which was worth £174.5 billion. Market share refers to the percentage of a market that a particular company has. So within this market of people spending £174.5 billion, Lidl acquire 3.5%, whereas Tesco's acquire 28.7% of that money. We're now going to summarise by comparing the key differences between mass market products and services and niche market products and services. As we've said before, mass market products and services have a wide appeal. So they appeal to everybody, no matter what your gender or your age. An example of this is Heinz Ketchup. However, niche markets have a strong appeal, but to a very limited audience. If we stay within the realm of condiments, a good comparison would be reggae reggae sauce or some sort of um, infused ketchup, maybe a brandy style ketchup. Okay, other examples that have been given through the Edexcel textbook, um, Mars Bar's Bounty and Iron Brew. So not everybody likes them, but the majority of people like ketchup. Another key difference 
is that the breadth of appeal, so the reason why so many people like mass market products, is because there's not really much to dislike, like we've just said over here. Niche markets tend to have that Marmite characteristic to it, that some people either really love the product or some people really dislike it. Usually, successful mass market products will be market leader, but will not charge too high of a price. So if you think of maybe Colgate toothpaste, which is a market leader with 40% market share worldwide, or alternatively, Wrigley's chewing gum, which has 90% of the UK market, but it's not necessarily the most expensive product. Niche markets, however, usually have a higher unit cost. They usually cost more to produce. Therefore, they're normally sold at a higher price. They tend to get away with this higher price tag because of the distinctive nature of the product. Other key points of comparison are the market share. Mass market products usually have a much larger market share than niche market products. Another point of comparison would be accessibility. Mass market products are often widely available through numerous distributors. However, niche market products are often only available direct online or through specialist retailers. Okay, we're going to make a start on the three question homework now. So if you're not feeling too comfortable with the content that we've covered, slide on back through the video and listen to it again until you feel comfortable with it. Or you could check out pages 9 to 12 in the Marcuse textbook, which is available on Moodle. If you're still feeling a little unsure, post your questions up on Edmodo and I'll get back to you. If you see that another person in the class has posted a question that you feel like you can answer on Edmodo, feel free to help each other out. Otherwise, if you're ready to get going, get a pen and pencil and notepaper, or alternatively, type out your answers on the computer. And what we're going to do is upload our homework answers to Edmodo so that I can mark them. Okie dokie, let's get going then. Question one, define market size and market share. Remember that definitions in the exam are worth two marks each. So what you need to now do is pause the video and time yourself for four minutes. Don't give yourself any more time than four minutes to write your answer for this question. Question two. Identify two benefits of mass marketing. So a couple of pointers in answering this six mark question. Your first two marks, you need to create a definition. And what do you think we're going to define? Well, we're defining mass marketing. Once you've done that, you'll get one mark for each benefit that you state. OK, so if you stated mass marketing allows you to have reduced costs, that would get you one mark. In order to get the additional mark for that benefit, you need to explain why there's reduced costs. OK, so one mark for stating what the benefit is, and then you get a two marks for taking it that little bit further and explaining it. You've got six minutes to create your answer. Pause the video and make sure you time yourself. Do not spend more than six minutes answering this question. Question three. What are the differences in approach to branding between niche and mass market products? Okay, this is an eight mark question. Start off with your definition. What are you likely to define here? Branding. So you've got your definition of branding. Then what you need to do is create a discussion about the differences between niche and mass. As a little bit of a pointer, think about who these products and services are targeting. Who are they meant for? That'll help you decide what the differences are between the branding. We're now going to have a look at this week's homework menu. So you can choose one of the four following tasks. I'll go through what's required of each task and you can choose which one you'd like to do for homework. So the first task you could do is create revision cards summarising what you have learnt about mass and niche marketing and you can do that using PowerPoint or Word. Your second option is to create an infographic using Canva summarising what you have learnt about mass markets and niche markets and try and use some examples of businesses within the two markets. So that's a little bit more of a creative task 
Canva is a really fun software to use, especially if you're into um, generating infographics and design. Your third option is to create a presentation or video explaining the key differences between a niche market product or service and a mass market product or service for two businesses of your choice. So you need to choose one niche product or service and compare that to a mass product or service. Okay, you can do that in a presentation using PowerPoint or Prezi. Try and push yourself a little bit and use a different type of software if you can. Or alternatively, you could make a video and you can do this by recording it on your phone. You could have a look at Teach Pro, which is a software you can download from the App Store. Or you could look at using maybe Mac Movie Maker. The final option is to pick a niche product or service of your choice and explain the difficulties that that business has in competing in that market. Use statistical evidence to support your discussion and when we say statistical evidence I want you to be using data that you've found about market size and market share and then you can present that in either a Prezi presentation, a PowerPoint or you can put it into a magazine article format on Publisher. So you're choosing a niche product or service that you like, you're investigating it, looking what its market share, market size is, and then explaining what difficulties that business has in operating within that market. Is it highly competitive? What are the prices like in that market? Is their share of the market big enough to sustain profitability for that company? Okay, so like I say, it's your choice which one you like to do. Make sure that you have that prepared for next lesson and if you can, upload it to Edmodo prior to the lesson so that we can share it. If you're going to do an infographic, make sure that you print it out and we're going to stick it up on the walls. Alternatively, if you're going to do your revision cards, make sure that they're printed out as well and I'll photocopy them and we can all share them. Okie dokie, we've come to the end of today's tutorial. I'm just going to go through what you need to do right now and tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing in class. So you need to make sure that you upload your three question homework to Edmodo so that I can mark it and we can start building a progress tracker so you can see how you're performing throughout the course. You also need to make sure that you complete your homework menu task. So depending on what you've chosen, you need to make sure that you've got that printed out before class or you've got your video or presentation on a memory stick. In class, we're going to start off having a look at burgers. That's all I'm going to tell you about that one. Then we're going to do a three question homework review and go over any of the issues that people had with the questions. Then we're going to share our homework menu work and this is really good because it means that we can help each other out but also you're building a portfolio of work for when you go to job interviews or universities you've got something a little bit more concrete to show about what you've been learning in your AS level. Then we're going to develop our te exam technique using melons and motors and then after that we're going to have a quick game of name it beach ball. So it should be a good one. Look forward to seeing you in class.